Okay, so this is uh, the inviscid flow equations. So, so, so the inviscid flow equation really is motivated by our uh, vorticity transport equation. So this is a uh, this is we take. All right, okay. So this is a uh, this is we take the fully compressible vorticity transport equation. Okay, so this is equal to a vortex stretching term. So it stretches the vortex the same way as in the uh, incompressible case, and uh, there is a grad rho dot grad p term divided by I think rho cube, and uh, uh, and the viscous term, which here we assume is zero for now. Okay. Now another assumption is that in the far field, in the free stream, there is no vorticity, so omega started with zero. So omega divided by rho started with zero. Now, a further assumption is that the flow is isotropic. So what does isotropic imply for the barrel clinic torque? Zero. And the reason is that for isotropic flow, so basically we have uh, dS is equal to zero, right? And uh, uh, so, so, and we also know TdS then is equal to zero, and according to, um, the Gibbs equation, this is equal to dE plus P times dV, right? So that's kind of uh, the, the heating received. So basically you can figure out a set of relationships between, uh, between that because dE can be represented as uh, uh, dT times CV, right? And uh, uh, this can be represented as, uh, okay, I guess you have a minus sign here, and P over rho square, d rho, right? And in addition to that, you, you know that uh, uh, P is equal to rho RT, so that also gives you a set of relationships if you differentiate that. So what it gives you is that uh, I would take it in, in a logarithmic form. So so log of log of p is equal to log of rho uh, plus log of r, which is a constant, plus log of t. And differentiating that gives me dp over p is equal to d rho over rho plus this is zero because there is no dr uh, dt over t, right? Okay, so, so basically through, through these two equations, this gives you one relationship, and the, the ds equal to zero gives you another relationship. Basically, uh, you can also divide, uh, this, this is basically cv times dt over t. You divide the entire thing by t. That is gonna be equal to p uh, rho t times, uh, rho t, yes, d rho by rho, right? Okay, so, so basically, uh, p over rho t is actually r, right? So, and uh, cv divided by r, the ratio between cv and r is, uh, is one divided by gamma minus one, right? So, so basically, uh, these these things gives you these things gives you some kind of a proportion proportionality between how much you can change in p, rho, and t. For example, uh, this this equation says that dt over t has to be okay uh, gamma minus one times d rho over rho, and uh, then you add this and this, it tells you dp over p has to equal to this plus this, which is uh, uh, gamma times d rho over rho, right? So, so if, you, if you can draw, if you can draw, uh, let's say, 
rho. Uh, if you can draw log of rho versus log of p or log of t on the diagram, they all look linear. So, so they all look linear, but with different different lines. <coughs> okay. So, so the reason I'm saying that is is that when the flow evolves, if the flow is isotropic, then rho, uh, then p is just a function of rho. So if p is a function of rho, then the gradient of p is always aligned with the gradient of rho. So this term automatically also becomes zero for uh, isotropic flows. Okay. Now the only term remaining is the uh, is this vorticity stretching, right? And if we know that omega started with zero, then we know that there is no vorticity being produced either by stretching or by baroclinic torques. And if we assume in addition is inviscid, that means d dt of omega divided by rho is equal to zero. So the inviscid flow equation for isotropic flows is basically omega equal to zero. Right, for isotropic inviscid flows. And omega equal to zero means that we can represent the velocity as the divergence of some potential function phi, right? Because the curl of that velocity is equal to zero. So that motivates the full potential equation. So the full potential equation is basically taking the conservation of mass. Uh, so, so the full potential equation assumes that the flow is inviscid and also steady state. So inviscid steady state. And uh, then uh, we do not have the Eulerian time derivative and in the mass conservation equation, we basically have this equal to zero. And if we write u as the gradient of a potential, basically what we have is this. Zero equal to some kind of a Laplacian. And the rho, we follow, uh, the, the rho has to be, the rho is actually a function of the velocity. And that's also by isotropic relationships. So basically, we have this rho is equal to rho infinity uh, times a function of the Mach number. So the function of the Mach number is uh, uh, gamma minus 1 divided by 2 times the Mach number. OK. And the Mach number is, uh, is a function of then the, the, the phi also. So basically, we have m infinity times 1 divided by v infinity square, the magnitude of the grad phi, which is the velocity square. Uh, well, this, is, uh, this has to be squared also. And uh, the density scales with this factor to 1 over gamma minus 1 power. So these two equations Basically, the primary equation is the is an equation that looks like the Laplace's equation, where the coefficient itself is a function of the gradient of phi. This is called the full potential equation.